light that brought life and healing to you has brought stripes and death to me. This 4th of July is yours. Stripes and death is shared by justice. Listen to what he said, man. It's shit deep. Because when y'all, uh, you go into, uh, we're going to go into a little bit of the history of Frederick, man, what he went through. Enjoyed in common the rich inheritance of justice, liberty, prosperity, and independence bequeathed by your fathers is shared by you, not by me. The sunlight that brought life and healing to you has brought stripes and death to me. This 4th of July, he said, I'm going to play that one more time, right? He says the sunlight that brought healing to you let me get these exact words. The sunlight that brought life and healing to you has brought stripes and death to me, right? Because a lot of our people think that uh, that we can coexist. There is no coexist. There, there are opposite equal. The Lord created night and day. He created good and evil. They're, they're the evil part. We're the good part. He created righteous and he created corrupt. So the, you know, the things that are are good for us are bad for them and the things that are good for them are bad for us that's the way the lord created it and he under it was it was it's insightful because this man knew where he was at he said the sunlight that brought life and healing to you has brought stripes and deaths to me you know how many of our people think that what's good for him is good for us and that's our fight we go out there we battle that every single week man this man is not your enemy you have to separate from him you know, but this this ancient wisdom that this man got, and that's the an ancient wisdom that he got that the Lord is returning to us. Hey, it's not a you don't see it in the earth, man. You don't see it. I'm gonna get this uh precept right. It's wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, and verse uh seven. It says, So that so of thy people was accepted both the salvation of the righteous and the destruction of the enemies. So we have to accept that they said what this man is already saying. He said, you know, our our elevation is their downfall, right? Their elevation is our downfall. And we have to accept that. It says, so of thy people was accepted both the salvation of the righteous. For us to, to be saved is what? And the destruction of the enemies. It's their destruction. You know, there can never be peace between us. And them, man, we can never celebrate when they celebrate, you know, when they celebrate, what was we doing? We when, Even when you go to that celebration, what we're doing, we passing out shit. We hanging out a restaurant win window saying, may I help you? We cleaning up tables. We sweeping up floors. We cleaning bathrooms. That's how we celebrate when they celebrate. We got on aprons, right? We got mops and brooms, right? We got we got hammers and, and, and damn rakes. That's the only that's the only time we celebrate when they celebrate. We passing out tea, Motisa. That's what we doing at their celebrations, man. Right? They eating the choice rhyme uh they they eating choice prime steak and we're eating the guts of pigs. Right? They're eating the choice, the choice food, and we're eating the slops at the same celebration. And nothing's changing, man. And all people say it's blessed, though. They call it blessed. To eat scraps off this white man's tables, man. But and I'm gonna let it play some, unless a brother got a precept, man. La uh, all right. Night that brought life and healing to you has brought stripes and death to me. Yeah. This Fourth of July is yours, yeah. not mine. You may rejoice; I must mourn. To drag a man in fetters into the grand illuminated temple of liberty and call upon him to join you in joyous anthems were in human mockery and sacrilegious irony. Right. Do y'all, I'm going to ask y'all, do y'all think that they they really brought this man up here to, to not, not imagine he's saying this at the White House in front of all these weak, white people? You think they paid this man or they was expecting this speech? You know, I'm asking y'all. Uh, 
Hell no. This is this is Frederick Douglass though. Yeah, this, no, he's this is this this not Frederick Douglass. This Frederick Douglass is dead, but uh, he's he's just reading his speech because I don't know okay, if it, kind, kind, kind. I don't know if it was recorded because it was back in the eighteen hundreds, but it was written, right? Kyle, he brought this out at the White House though. Yeah, I believe so. Oh, at the White House, right? Now you think that they was expecting him to say that? Nah, hell no. <laughs> it's just like uh. I don't know if brothers hip to it uh, on that. I think it was SNL, Dave Chappelle, right? Uh, like they wanted him to come up there and perform. So he had when he when they went in there for auditions, he presented them he presented them like a false uh, presentation, and they was all clapping and shit. But he was cold. He knew the whole time this is what. So when he got on stage, he brought out a whole different plot. You know that one where they damn you ain't seen Dave Chappelle since. Where he was talking about, he was talking about everything, right? Y'all, y'all, y'all seen that last Dave Chappelle? No, nah, I'm gonna check that out. Yeah, you gotta, check yeah. It out. you gotta check it out. But anyhow, he had to trick them. He had two speeches. He had to, sh- he had to present a speech to them that they would want to hear. When he knew, once he got on stage, he was gonna bring it out, you know. And I believe that's what Frederick Douglass is doing, you know. But uh, because he, he, I believe that they wanted him to sell out. You know, definitely they wasn't expecting him to bring this stuff out. You know, he said, this is your 4th of July. You know, the the white man don't don't like being called out for his, his sins. That's one thing I do know. And we be around base Edomites. Imagine being around chief Edomites. What happened to, let's get that. What happened when, when, when John told damn Herod about himself? A chief Edomite, what happened? They wanted to uh, get his head cut off. They put his ass to death, man. They threw him in prison, and then they cut off his head. You know, that's what they did. You know, so Im- imagine. Hey, this this took a lot of it took a lot of uh, uh, guts, man. It took a lot of bravery for this man. But when you go back to his history, this was a brave man. This was a brave man. But I'm gonna let it pray play. Do you mean citizens to mock me? by asking me to speak today. What to the American slave is your 4th of July? I answer, a day that reveals for him more than all other days of the year the gross injustice and cruelty to which he is a constant victim. To him, your celebration is a sham. Your boasted liberty an unholy license, your national greatness swelling vanity, your sounds of rejoicing are empty and heartless, your denunciation of tyrants, brass-fronted impudence, your shouts of liberty and equality, hollow mockery, your prayers and hymns, your sermons and thanksgivings, with all your religious... Hey, man, sound like a rebuke to me. (laughs) <laughs> it sounds like a rebuke so y'all gotta you gotta kind of visualize the audience it's only damn near one so-called black man up there hundreds of Edomites you know and they they expecting him to get up there and seeing him some type of Negro spiritual entertain him you know and he go up there and start waving the hand man you know his brother was in the spirit on the 4th of July man Parade and solemnity are to him mere bombast, fraud, deception, impiety, and hypocrisy. A thin veil to cover up crimes that would that would disgrace a nation of savages. There's not a nation you going crazy. of yeah. the earth guilty of practices more shocking and bloody than are the people of these United States at this very hour. At a t- uh, when I was listening to this earlier, I was listening. I was like, bring it out. <laughs> I was like, bring it out. You know, hey, hey, you go, hey, going in, man. Hold on. You kind of sound like us on the streets. Can I say impiety? 
Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna get that. Uh, what is that? That's uh, song with the three holy children because he said there was a, there hasn't been a nation more bloody than the United States, man. Right. Uh, let me get this real quick. This is a uh, song of the three holy children. It's uh, chapter one and uh, verse mm, one and verse nine. It says, and thou, and thou did deliver us into the hands of a lawless enemy, most hateful forsakers of Yahweh, and to an unjust king and the most wicked in all the world. And now we cannot open our mouths and we are become a shame and a reproach to thy servants and to them that worship thee. Right. So the same things, you know, Jake think Jake think things have changed, but they only gotten worse. Things haven't gotten things haven't changed. You just got dumber. And that's sad. Things haven't changed. You just got more stupider. Man, those chains, those bondage shackles around your damn brain has has tightened up because the fact that you say you free. The more you say you free, the dumber you get. Year after year. The only way out of this oppression is to realize your state. Right? It says, uh, it says, and thou has delivered us into the hands of lawless enemies. These these are lawless bastards, man. It says, most hateful forsakers of Yahweh into an unjust king and the most wicked in all the world, man. You know. The most wicked, and you know, all, all people want to be just like him. And I, that's Jake's. Them Jake's letting off fireworks, man. Them damn Jake's, man. You know, you you know, you behind on your rent. You know, you can't afford them damn fireworks. You know, you know, you can't afford them damn red, white, and blue Jordans. You see E with the red, white, and blue weave, man. Jake with the red, white, and blue watch, red, white, and blue belt. You know. It's, 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 man, I got a preset too. Bring it out. Con, this is uh, Leviticus 18 and 3. According to the doings of the land of Egypt, where you dwelt, you should not do. And according to the doings of the land of Canaan, where I am bringing you, you should not do, nor shall you walk in their ordinances, man. And that's what's going on, man. You know, this is spiritually uh, Egypt that we're living in today, man. And the Lord said, man, you know, don't don't follow their ways and do what they do. You know what I'm right. saying? And he told it that's for a reason, because there's nothing new under the sun. We was doing it back then. And now now our people are doing it now. And he gave us specific. And this is in the Torah, too. He gave us specific commands what to do or what not to do you know what i'm saying and that's why we go out there on the highways and byways to uh enlighten our people and to open up their eyes that the uh that the way of this land is not right and their traditions and what they do is not right you know what i mean and we got to yeah. let them know where we where we, where we at and, and what because everything is spiritual so we let them know the spiritual aspect of where we're dwelling at man we know that egypt is bondage and slavery right right that's right uh, this Isaiah chapter 30, verse 1, it says, Woe to the rebellious children, say of Yahweh, that take counsel, but not of me, and that covered with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, right? That that walk down to go into Egypt. And that's what our people do when we take upon this covering. You know, you add sin to sin, you already here. You already here for, 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 for the penalty of sin. But then you you take on the ways of the society. You just add sin to sin, man. You're not here to celebrate. That man said, I heard him say, he said, rejoicing is in your mouth, but mourning is in my mouth. How can we, we can't sit at the same table? How can you add sin to sin, Jake? You know, how what 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 has happened to you that you've now, it, it's Stockholm Syndrome. You've developed, you've been here so long that you you've developed some type of sympathy for the one who raped you. The one who murdered you, the one who took you captive. That's what happened. If if somebody is it, it, there's cases of it where a man kidnapped a woman, chained her in the basement, and you know it had sex with her repeatedly, you know, beat her, 
after a while, she'll, she'll start to say it's my fault. After a while, she'll start to love that man, you know, and simple. She'll, she'll start simple. It's stock. It's a, it's a condition. It's a sickness, man, that all people have. Now they love this man. It's, he's not really all that bad. It's our fault. Why, do, why don't we just talk about our sins? Why do you always talk about him? Why, why? It's our fault that we're here. You know, we should just acknowledge that and then love everybody. Hell no. You know. But I'm going to continue reading. It says that walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves with the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore, sh therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust of the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. Right. So, you know, it might be a day where the most High come back and you got on red, white and blue. You know, you blazing up your pork on the grill. And that's going to be your shame and your confusion, you know. Uh, I'm going to get, I'm going to get one more. Micah 2 and 10. Micah 2 and 10, right? It's Micah chapter 2 and verse 10. It says, Arise ye. Heart, for this is not your rest because it is polluted it shall destroy you even with a sore destruction like the brother was saying this place this place is polluted man you know we can't take upon the ways of this others of this people you know nothing they do is wholesome nothing they do is right nothing they they do add, add to you it just take away man diminish you you know, that's why the Lord said, be ye holy. But I'm going to finish this, man. Guilty of practices more shocking and bloody than are the people of these United States at this very hour. At a time like this, scorching irony, not convincing argument, is needed. Oh, had I the ability and could reach the nation's ear, I would today pour forth a stream, a fiery stream of biting ridicule, blasting reproach, withering sarcasm, and stern rebuke. For it is not light that is needed, but fire. Yeah. It is not the gentle shower, but thunder. We need the storm, the whirlwind, the earthquake. The feeling of the nation must be quickened the conscience of the nation must be roused. The propriety of the nation must be startled. The hypocrisy of the nation must be exposed and the crimes against God and man must be proclaimed and denounced. James Earl Jones, reading the words of Frederick Douglass. Why so? Hey, that was mighty. So uh, if brothers didn't know about Frederick Douglass, I'm going uh, to read a little bit about him, right? He, said, uh, uh, he talked to, uh, he talked to uh, Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. I'm going to read about a little bit of things that he done, right? What he went through, right? It says Frederick Douglass and his journey from captive slave to international renowned activist, Frederick Douglass, 1818 to 1895, has been a source of inspiration and hope for millions. His brilliant words and brave actions continue to shape the ways that we think about race, democracy, and the meaning of freedom, right? It says, Frederick Douglass Washington Bailey was born into slavery on the Eastern shore of Maryland in February, 1818. He had a difficult family life. He barely knew his mother who lived on a different plantation and died when he was young. Imagine that, man. Imagine that. So he, it, it, we talking about a child that grew up without his mother, right? He never discovered the identity of his father. He never knew his father. When he turned eight years old, his slave master, his slave owner, hired him to work as a body servant in Baltimore. Now I've never really heard this this term, body servant. What, what y'all think that is? Man? Now I've heard slave. I've heard, you know, servant, but I've never heard body servant. 
he eight eight years old, right? I'm gonna say uh, it says, what the hell? Hold on. Go get uh Trinity real quick for me. I don't know what just happened to. Can y'all see my screen? Y'all still there? Tom, I'm right here. It says, uh, it says, uh, body servant. The term body servant refers to someone working as a personal servant for a soldier. Generally, that included tasks such as cooking and caring for the soldier's gear. The vast majority, though not at all, of body servants traveling with the uh, confeder uh, confederacy were held in slavery. So it's like an own personal, like you know what I mean? Okay. Slave. Okay. Uh did you tell her to come here? Yeah. Screen kind of disappeared. There you go. I got it. It says, uh at an early age, Frederick realized there was a connection between literacy and freedom. Now, I thought that was profound. You know. He said, it says Frederick realized. There was a connection between literacy and freedom, right? So he 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 knew there was a connection between knowing and being free, right? Uh, and we just read that in Hosea, uh, chapter four and six. It says, "My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge." So how many of our people? That's that's what we. That's why we here. That's why we now celebrating with with the uh with this world with babylon with ak a uh uh egypt with with america because we 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 put together the connection between literacy meaning knowing educating yourself and freedom and we understand that destruction the shackles the chains that's connected with with ignorance hey this brother was profound man uh i'm gonna get this this precept this is uh it's Revelations chapter 1, verse 3. It says, uh, Blessed is he that readeth. <laughs> That's what this man knew. He realized the connection between literacy and freedom. It says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things that are written therein. Right? I thought it said, Open up the book and read. You know? But, uh, I'm going to keep going unless a brother got a precept. It says, uh, not allowed to attend schools, he taught himself to read and write in the streets of Baltimore. At 12, he bought a book called Columbian Orator. It was a collection of, of revolutionary speeches, debates, and writings on natural rights. So this brother, he self-learned, you know, and a lot of our brothers, we that's what, that's what happens when you come out of darkness. You know, you start watching the breakdowns. You start, you start getting your Bible. You, you buy apocrypha. You get the uh, the book of. Uh, you go through the same steps of, of of the rest of our brothers that came came into the knowledge that is true. You get the book from uh, Babylon to Timbuktu. You know, you get various books about history, history of the Jews. You you get the thirteen tribes. You start you start to learn, man. It says when Frederick was fifteen, his slave owner sent him back to the Eastern shores to labor as a field hand. Frederick rebelled intensely. He educated other slaves, physically fought against a slave breaker and plotted an successful and unsuccessful escape. So um, I want y'all brothers to think about that, man. There is no other count of a brother being able to uh, resist a slave breaker. Think about that, man. What the slave breakers could do. Uh, somebody look that up, slave breaker, for me real quick, and let's go into some of those things that they used to do. So this this brother, he ne he barely knew his mom. He never seen his dad. Right, he taught himself to read, not only to read, but he became fluent. He became like a a, a revolutionary speech uh, speaker, and debater, and writer. Right. Brother, look that up. Oh, shit. This is hot. 
Hassan. It is a, a person who specializes in destroying the wills of unruly slaves, especially in the context of antebellum American South, Great George. You see that? An antebellum. That's where they got that word from. It was uh, a person. That's what they called it. Antebellum. Antebellum. It was a person that uh, they expert expertise was to break the wheel, man. You had this behavioral buck. problems. You see that? And that's what they do today. That's what they've done. We living in a state of antebellum. And you know, these ones that, that they can't break, like, like the brothers that I stand around with, they can't break our will. That's what make the, the, those brothers that, that say Jesus loves everybody. You know, they don't talk with no damn bass in their voice. They don't, they don't have no fight. They, they breaking the will of those men, you know, but it's certain men on this earth that you can't break their will no matter what. This man was literally tortured. I can't no telling. They tortured the man so bad that there was nothing else that they could do to him. They sent him back. Imagine the spirit that was in this man. Ain't no telling what they, uh, he was given to a slave breaker. One that was trained and uh, specified in breaking the will of so-called black men. And he broke the will of the slave breaker, man. He made the slave breaker quit. It says, <laughs> frustrated. It says, frustrated his slave owner returned him to Baltimore. So he sent him back. <laughs> the, this time, Frederick met a young free black woman named Anna Murray, who agreed to help him escape on September 3rd, 1838. He disguised himself as a sailor and boarded a northbound train using money from Anna to pay for his ticket in less than 24 hours. Frederick arrived in New, New York and declared himself free. He had successfully escaped slavery. So this was this was a man that was giving wisdom too, man. But you know, I ain't have that's why I just want to go through that real quick. You know, my damn uh neighbors want to be damn demons, man. Uh but I ain't unless a brother got a precept, that's all I have, man. Kind of, I got a code precept. Bring it out. Got it out. Um, this is a. Uh, let me first. Let me. I'm gonna get um. Jeremiah 14 and two. It says Judah mourneth and the gates thereof languish. Like, the gates is speaking of is talking about uh, our leadership. Oh. And uh, cause that's cause the gates will be the head of the city where people will be, will be going in and out most. So that's where the uh, Israelites would be at the elders of the city and they're judging and whatnot and bringing out scriptures, but. Point being, our gates, our leaders, our forefathers did not set that up for us. They didn't teach that to us, hence, this is why we're in a predicament in the day. This, uh, this is the last precept. This is uh, Genesis 49 and 9. It says, Judah's alliance will from the prey, my son, that are gone up. He stooped down, he, he couched as a lion, as an old lion who shall rouse him up. So, you know what I'm saying? That's, that, that's double fold on a lot of things, but you can you can put that to um the, the elder men of today. Right? Our elder men today are not as really revolutionary as they was once were type stuff. You know what I'm saying? So they don't our elder men, the, the gates of our cities, the gates of our elders, they don't have that revolutionary mindset no more to as far as putting forth action to uh to, to lead or to teach the younger men or something. So now, you know what I'm saying, everything's out of order. Wow. Uh -huh. Oh, it is, man. It is, but you see how mighty that you see how mighty he was, man. Con, that's what I'm saying. We need men, our gay's language. He we need more men like that. Right, right. That man was mighty, man. Shit. Go ahead, JP. I know you got some free stuff. Con, uh, you know, he was mighty, man. You know, I used to I remember growing up reading Frederick Douglass. My mom bought me that book, you know what I mean? It's not a lot, it wasn't a lot of pages, but it got to the point and it got specific on uh, what his duty was and what, uh, what he achieved. Um, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, he's, you know, we had, we had, that just let you know the spirit that was on uh, Elder at that time, you know? And, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's in our blood, man, you know, that we do uh, certain things, us being who we are, which is Israelites. You know what I'm saying? 
and uh just letting you know like how our people was destroyed but let alone still have the zeal though you know what i mean still uh understood and knew and it, it's been a lot of uh a lot of examples in that but you know in the in the later times the most high said that in your captivity that um you know i will wake you to understand who you are you know and i feel like back then at that time too we uh, we had an idea and had a, a, a spiritual feeling but couldn't really uh uh get over that hump like we are now um this is uh james uh, uh five and two my brethren take the prophets who spoke in the name of the lord as an example of the suffering and patience. And the point is, is uh, 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 of the examples that was uh, put in front of us at that time. You know, Frederick Douglass was mighty, especially when you uh, dive into it and understand what he uh, did and let alone what he brought out, his speech and everything. You could tell that he was in the spirit, man. You know what I mean? Because you could see that, you could see uh, some of that taking place today with some of the brothers that's out there on the highways and byways. That's that same spirit is in us, man, because we all got the same blood, man. You know what I mean? Um, let me get uh let me get to go to uh what is it, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 23. And you should not walk in the statues of the nation which I cast out before you, for for they commit all these things, and therefore I abhor them. And it's crazy too, because this is prophecy within itself that's going to take place as well too because the lord he is going to cast out spiritual egypt he is going to uh, cast out babylon the great and just imagine when we going into the wilderness what's going to happen you know what i mean just like how you brought out on that with isaiah 31 and 1 going down you know what i mean uh, people's want to go people's going to want to go back to the ways of uh, uh egypt let alone uh remember these pagan holidays that uh people's participating in uh in today man you know people love sin this is sin people love going against the lord and I and it's crazy too because it's like how can you you know what I mean how can you go against the Lord the the Creator you know what I mean uh, this all uh, this, this Jeremiah chapter forty nine and, and ten it says but I have made Esau bear and I have cut places he shall not be able to hide himself his seed is spoiled and his brethren and his neighbors and he is not and that's what the brother was going to he was saying that you know these wicked deeds they had to be exposed. You know what I'm saying? He said, you want to celebrate this stuff, but this stuff needs to be exposed for wickedness. You know, and between the time of the 1800s until now, you know, that spirit on the earth, you didn't see it. It's damn near, you know, disappeared. Now, now that spirit is back on the earth where Esau is being exposed. He said he ought to be rebuked. And he ought, he said it not to be rejoiced. He said this place needs to be burned. Man, you can't tell me that that brother wasn't a prophet, man. He said this place ought to be burnt. That's what he said, man. And, and that's what we say, man. We say this place ought to be burnt. But uh, you know, he I got in, uh I got one more precept to let me back off what you just brought out too. Oh, come on, come on. Cause just like you say, you know, he's being exposed. You know what I'm saying? And uh that's the whole point for us to expose uh and everything that the uh the wicked is doing. This is uh Proverbs 26 verse 26. Though his hatred was covered by deceit. His wickedness will be revealed before the assembly. You know what I mean? The wickedness is being revealed as of today, man. You know, um, just everything what they uh what the meaning of Fourth of July is. Um, and, and it is crazy too because it was being revealed back then. It's just on a whole different scale now. You know what I mean? It's just on a whole different scale, you know, and uh just like I I I can't never stop saying there's just nothing new under the sun. So what's gonna happen back then is gonna happen now. And it's in this in this it's happening at a fast a faster pace, man. All praise to the most high. I'll pray to the most high. Can y'all see my uh my screen? Uh, 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 let me see. Share screen. I'm gonna share something real quick. All right. Uh can y'all see it now? Time. All right. Now let's <laughs> let's it says, uh, anybody ever look at what the, uh, what the American flag stood for? Con, ain't the red is for like the blood. Yeah. Um, the, uh, uh, ain't the, uh, the stars for like the, uh, what the, uh, the states or whatever they think they control or run. And, yeah. uh, 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 I only know those two, but yeah, I heard that. Yeah, uh, 
Uh, I think what what the white for their skin. Right. Hold on. Let's 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 look it up. Because right. it shows you how. Uh, the blue for the military. And it shows uh, you how hypocritical these people are. It says the white symbolizes purity and innocence. Mm -hmm. The white symbolizes purity and innocence. Uh, the red symbolizes strength and valor. The blue wow. symbolizes vigilance, perseverance, and justice. Wow. Uh, right. You know, uh, I'm going to get this, man. Psalms 30, 137. So this is the hypocritical nation. It says the white symbolizes purity and innocence. How? Ah, this Psalms one thirty seven uh, in the uh, verse, and that's how you know, man. It's, it it be spiritual, man. These demons came out here as soon as they seen me out here on a computer, man. It be so spiritual, man. Every everything that, everything that we do is is damn near with not without a fight, and brothers have to realize that. You know, not that, you know, people not going to be doing fireworks, but, you know, I see them damn it, looking down here to see if, if if it's annoying me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> con, con, yep. <laughs> this is, uh, this is Psalms 137. And eight, it says, O daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed. So it's the same thing. How, how are we saying the same thing that, uh, David was saying, you know, thousands of years ago that, that, uh, this, this brother was saying hundreds of years ago and we're saying the same thing they, they haven't changed and that's why they that's why they ought to be destroyed we're not firing no damn firecrackers we're not blazing up the grill putting no pork on there we're not drinking no damn fag beers man we're not doing none of that shit man it says oh daughter of babylon who ought to be destroyed happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou was as thou hast served us happy shall he be that take and dash of thy little ones against the stone. That's the only thing that I want to celebrate. You know, we talk about it at camp all the time, man. We believe it's going to be a baby dashing contest day. You know, how many babies? Uh. Do <laughs> hey, I'm going to outdo brothers. <laughs> I'll do brothers, man. You know, if you if you dash, I'm I'm one up you. I, but we all gonna laugh. You know, it's gonna be a. It's that's the celebration we wait for. And we might have some lamb. We might have some young, young, and we might just have like five thousand babies. You know, we just, we just kind of round up little, little ones, not just infants, but you know, probably eight, one to fifteen, probably Time. about uh, five thousand of them. We tell them run, you know, Time. send them off in some woods or something like that, you know, and then we hunt them down with our spiritual powers. We just get the bashing them, right? And we take their skulls. And Put them in a knapsack. That kind of sound like Predator. Con. Don't that sound like the movie? <laughs> yeah, Kai. Yeah. How I'm describing the movie Predator, and they call us super the super predators. So this may be what's going to happen in the future. You know, through the spirit, we may round them up. You know, let you go in the woods. You know, and then we go to work. <laughs> we go to work. What up? What? No, but uh. With that, man, hey, brothers, stay in the spirit, man. Much love to y'all, brothers, man. You know, Shalom. Unless shalom. A brother shalom. All right, Shalom. Shalom. shalom.